Hello, welcome back to this video and today we're going to see how to start using your hammer fist and before we explain how we're going to get closer and we're going to teach how to actually start closing the fist in the different directions. So this is called a hammer because it's kind of like mimicking a hammer. So imagine that you truly have a hammer. This is the handle and this is actually the head of the hammer and imagine that the person has a nail over here. You're going to nail uh, with your hammer. Same as if it's the nail right here, you can nail downwards like this. As you can see, everything depends on the extension of the arm and whatever the direction you go, the idea is to extend your arm, right? Uh, the extension is never going to be 180. Never go to that full extension. Usually it's because if you meet any resistance, the elbow will give up a little bit and that can actually hurt you more than, but not more, but can hurt you equally uh, or even if it's a little bit hurt you and not only the other person. So that is just the mechanics with the hands. But what happens when I want to add power? So there are two ways of adding quote unquote power. And I say quote unquote because one is truly how to add power. The other one is kind of dividing the power, but kind of creating a space. Now I'm going to explain that separated. So the first thing that I want to focus in is how to generate the maximum power. And that is if I'm moving in one direction, in this case, I'm moving towards my right. I'm going to twist in the same direction. So as you can see, I'm twisting at the same time that I'm extending. So that way I can generate the power at the same time. That is one way of doing that. The second way, and that's why I said quote unquote, would be to divide the forces. And that is more of like I attack, but I open in different directions. You can see now my arm is twisting in the same direction, but now I'm actually twisting in the opposite direction, meaning my hand continues going towards the right, but the rest of the body is going towards the left. Now, why? In this case, for example, I can use these in two ways, to punch, as I said before, with as much power as possible, particularly in this case, when I want to go towards the inside here or to even check for that hand. As you can see, I continue twisting towards that side. However, if I want to go towards the back, I'm going to go to and do the opposite. As you can see, I'm not only attack, but now I'm twisting in the opposite direction. Why? Because now it's easier for me to uh, attack the back and see the back. Now, Sometimes you can use this also to not only punch, but to punch to strike the other person. So you're trying to escape because now it's easier for me to move out of the way. So as you can see, hopefully now it's clear. One is to commit with the punch and to punch with as much power as possible. And the other one is to divide, quote unquote, the force because your uh, purpose is either to look for the back or to escape out of the way. But everything that I have discussed so far is actually very clear when you go horizontally because it's easy to see. You're going in one direction, you twist in the same direction. Same if I'm going here, I'm going to this direction, so I'm going to go here, right? But what happens when you have a component that goes up or down? Like for example, when it go 45 degrees down or 45 degrees up or straight down, and straight up. In these cases, you have to add that component by either, when I go lower, bending my knee, slightly going downwards, or going slightly upwards by lifting my heel and pressing with the back uh, foot, with the uh, ball of your foot, going straight up. So again, you can go 45 degrees down, for example, and using your knee to put some weight down, or going 45 degrees up and pushing with your heel, excuse me, lifting your heel and pushing with the ball of your foot, going straight upwards. So that is an easy, uh, an easier way to see. The only distinction that I would make is when you go 45 degrees downwards, like, like so, as you can see, I'm rotating also my hips and I can rotate both feet. In this case, this lightly, and this is a little bit more. As you can see, it allows me to rotate in the direction that I'm going to, right? But if you go straight downwards, if I and if you do the same thing, look at what happens. If I twist it, even if, if it's this much, my hips are now kind of like rotated 45 degrees inwards while my punch is going straight downwards. So you can see it's kind of like disconnecting the punch from the twist. So for that case, you don't actually need to twist that much, just a little twist enough for you to put your hips towards the front and then emphasize the movement going downwards. Same when you go up, when you go 45 degrees up, you can twist in the direction of the punch. But if you are going to go straight, you only need to push with your hip. That's it. That's all you need to do. Now, that is kind of how, and, and I hope that this is clear enough. You can do technically an asterisk, meaning straight down, straight up, 45 degrees down, 45 degrees up, 
straight towards the side, straight towards the side on one side, 45 degrees down in this direction, but definitely you cannot, or it's very difficult to do, definitely not adding any power, 45 degrees up, from uh, abierta, in this case, from open position to cerrada, that's called closed position, or straight up like this, which is even more awkward because your shoulder is not designed to do this movement. So again, except these two on the bottom, uh, this, this is bottom and bottom left, bottom right, you won't be able to do them uh, with efficiency. So that's why you're gonna be restricted to the asterisk minus those, uh, those two. Now that is taking care of the how, but like when and where are you gonna use it? Well, technically you can do many things. You can attack the face, right? As you can see, um, you can even attack the body. As you can see, there are many ways in which you can do, but in general, in Kajugen, we're going to use that as a way for us to deter the other person from attacking us again. That doesn't mean that you're gonna knock out a person, you're gonna uh, break the arm or anything, but definitely you're gonna cause some damage. And that is actually why I emphasize that idea of creating as much power as possible. Because when a person punches you, and again, we have a separate video for um, targets that I have right here, so you can click around here, uh, in which I'm explaining the targets. That is where you can use the, uh, the hammer. So basically the idea is to parry and strike at the same time. So if you're here, is doing this in one motion. Now you have the 45 degrees down, you even have one that goes straight towards the back of the person. But the main idea behind those is to actually open a door for something else, like open door for a follow-up strike. So you're gonna go 45 degrees down, so you can open, or 45 degrees, oh, straight towards the back, so you can open again, separating uh, that fist from your face, and then you can open that side. However, of course, the other person has another hand. So if you just do this, the other person is gonna punch you in the face. So you have to be mindful of that. Many ways in which you can do that, in Kajukembo, we have the three in one, which is when you kick at the same time. So you are not only punching, but you're also distancing yourself, making it harder for the other person to continue. Plus the kick will check the other person from going forward. Or you can go towards the side by stepping sideways and distancing yourself towards the side. Those are two good solutions to do this, at least when you're starting. And even when you're sparring, you're here, you move out of the way, it's quick enough. Uh, it persuades the other person, it gets the point, and you still remain in the same position, meaning you can go from here quickly to your guard and defend yourself. But there's also another way of doing that, and that's when you take care of the uh, punch, for example, when you use an elbow. And the second one is when you're actually going to incorporate your uh, hammer. Again, one more time, one and two, right there, right? So most of those are dedicated towards the arm, and that is probably the most useful ones that you're gonna see. However, they're not restricted. We're not restricted only to that, uh, to those. You're gonna use a lot of the hammers when you are already close to the person. You can either use the ones when you are getting closer towards the person, but you're still not that close. And that is, for example, when you attack the ribs, that's one of the main ones that you have. And again, this is by moving out of the way, you might think, well, you can punch. Yes, of course, you can also punch with the ribs. Now, there's nothing else, there's nothing really bad about that. In fact, I would encourage you to do that, but sometimes it's also actually useful to not only hammer, but to actually using the hammer, checking the other person so you can move out of way. What I mean by that is striking and move out of way because it's easier for you as you're stepping sideways and you're distancing yourself to already just step backwards and gain enough range. If I punch, that means that I'm still kind of close. So I would have to either move and move or I go already towards the side, but I barely punch the person. So as you can see, it's easier for me to check from the distance, pushing the person away, and I'm truly farther away. So it's a little detail. Now, you can also use, as I said before, we're starting to get closer towards the person. One was the ribs, but what if we were already here? Now you can use the hammer against the belly. We're gonna see it from the other side. Let's say for whatever reason, we reached this, for example, you can use uh, the hammer against the belly, whether it is, let's say that I went here and I open and I use, in this case, my left one, or the most simple one, which is going straight with your right one. In this case, the one that is closest to their belly. So that is actually a nice way to get closer and is not necessarily something that you 
as I said before, are going to look for a person to stop fighting. Obviously, everything counts, right? And there's some things that might be a little bit easier to pull off than that, right? But if you are, for example, job and cross, you are already here. For whatever reason, you manage to be close to the person here. You can actually incorporate that as part of your arsenal, particularly not against that specific target, but here towards the groin in which you can immediately hit the person and lower the body. And talking about the groin, what happens after the groin? You can use now your hammers towards the back of the person, whether it is the back of the head, which is an excellent one, particularly the one that comes from the other side, from the back leg, as you can see, there's more range, or towards the back of the person, particularly the center, which is one way of doing it, or the other one I'm going to be on the side so you can see it better, right here, uh, we call it the kidney shot, but there's no kidneys because the kidneys are actually more located in the middle forward, not on the middle towards the back because that's covered by muscles, but it really hurts. <laughs> so what you're trying to do when you do this, this hammer is to actually hurt the muscle and also part of the sensation will be um, received by the nerve that will send that, that message that kind of like mimics, and that's why sometimes people call it like the uh, kidney shots because it mimics the pain they would uh, suffer when your kidneys are suffering, when your kidneys are hurt, right? In this case, this is the idea. Now, as you can see, that is more for when you are, again, looking already towards the back. So again, from uh, the longest range to the closest range towards the back in succession, Arms, you can attack the arms by using the hammer. Sometimes when you get slightly closer and start working towards the other person's body, you can use also the hammer on the ribs. Let's say that you're closer towards the person, you can go with the hammer towards the belly, or if you have managed to even clear jab and cross these, you can attack with the other side as well. One thing that you have to be mindful of is that you not always have to be uh, covering and hitting the belly. Sometimes you can use this to hit the groin, which is another option that we have. And talking about the groin, let's say that I'm close. Now I have access to the back and I can hit the back of the head, especially good for uh, the back uh, hand. In this case, the hand that was on the back because I can generate more power. And you can also have access to the center of the body or in this case, or the back or, or the uh, side of the lower back, which is what we were talking about, the kidney, quote unquote, kidney shots. So hopefully, I know this is a lot of information. Uh, hopefully this is useful enough. Hopefully this is something that you can incorporate you to your practice. This is kind of like a way to systematize um, where and when and how to use your hammers. First part was dedicated in how to explain how to, the different angles work and how to add power, but the second one is specifically how to look at specific areas like the targets on the arms, targets on the middle of the body, uh, groin and the back. So hopefully that will inspire you to incorporate some in your uh, work. So as usual, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you like, please like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Oosh.